just painting this high elf uh, bolt thrower right now. It's uh, two crew members. Uh, these are the models from the, the first video that I opened uh, as new from the blister pack. So they're uh, at least getting some paint on them now. I thought it'd be useful to start filming again on this because it has a few other um, colours that I can deal with, like the blue colours, a bit more like the, the archers, which only showed in the first video getting some uh, white onto them, which I've done with these items also. It's the same white technique. And then I had moved just onto the, the spearmen after that, so this will be a bit closer to the, the archers in terms of the colour scheme. One thing I am finding with an object like this is it can be quite tricky painting some of the features which disappear under well, disappear to the underside of the parts where the person sculpting it couldn't really define the details or complete the shapes so there's, there's a kind of there's a few spots where it's not entirely clear where to uh, have the dividing line between the uh, colour areas. But I mean, that's just older miniatures like this. I think you've just got to choose a, a scheme, a pattern, and go with it. And use the army book as a guide. You've got to have the army book couple issues of the old white dwarf just to compare what you're doing to something. But you've got to love how bold the uh, colour schemes are with these old miniatures. Just don't seem to do them like that so much. I thought this bolt thrower was going to be relatively easy to paint but there's actually quite a lot more going on than I first thought when you start doing it in quite a few areas where I'm going to try and keep things neat and tidy rather than uh, having to correct mistakes where I'm painting up near where the, uh, the white parts are Just about there with the base colours. Just got a little bit of tidying up to do. With the whites. And then finish off the blue. All I'm doing is going back with my original mix of contrast paints for the blue. Uh, for the white, sorry. just to get a little bit more colour in where I want it. Up on the feather, up on the helmet. You've just got to be careful if you do go back over any of the white that you've previously used, this uh, contrast mix. If you've used it already, a second application of it will uh, will really make it look quite blue as it dries. These arrows in the quiver. Just need a bit more of the blue contrast on those.
The underside, best not to worry about it too much. And back to the Calador sky to finish off some of these uh, blue areas. The coverage isn't great. It's, uh, it's definitely more than more than a one coat sort of a paint. But we will be going over this again once we uh, have done the shading anyway, so really just kind of tidying up some of the edges. Because if you notice it a little bit patchy in places, Remember that you know you're going to put shades over it, shade paints over it, and then uh, do some layering and highlighting anyway. So you don't really need to worry too much about the coverage. Again, yeah, this is the colour scheme shown in the 4th edition army book. There's a, a decent enough photo of the bolt thrower in there on the crew. So really just going with that for guidance on this. Yeah, you notice at most on the kind of plain flat areas where the paint doesn't really cover too well. Okay, so that's it for the base colours. So that's the shades now done for the two crew members. And this is when you can really start to see the miniatures uh, improving. In terms of that paint job starting to uh, come together. The one thing, I haven't done the shades on the actual bolt thrower itself yet. Just got some tidying up to do. I think that's one of the key uh, ways that I paint. It's just uh, always checking and coming back and tidying up any mistakes before moving on. So these little claws on the feet. Just need a little bit of tidying up. I think if you just keep on top of the mistakes, make sure you're correct and everything. At least for me anyway, that helps uh, helps uh, you end up with a better result. But I think it can be tempting to try and treat everything as a, as a race. Or a speed painting challenge. And I just don't think it's going to be like that for most people. I think you need to... Take your time. Try and keep it neat. Okay, so the the shade paints are the same gonna be the same set that I've used on the, the two crewmen. Um with the shade paints I start with the lightest one first. So the white's already done, so we move on to the yellow. And the Cassandora yellow, I think it's called. Just trying to be a little bit careful not to get the yellow too much onto the white areas because it'll tend to mix in with the, the blue shading for the, 
for the white and produce a kind of green result. Can't avoid it in some areas, but just trying to prevent it where I can. And as always, I'm just going around in sections at a time. The underside, those kind of lower surfaces, really difficult to uh, ever see them. Okay, just moving on to the red areas now with the Karaberg Crimson. This one will make a mess of the adjoining white areas if you go over the edge. So I'm just trying to be careful with it a little bit. With the flights on the arrows with a less on the brush this time. Just I think it's inevitable that I'll go on to the white and we can tidy that up later. And then onto the feet, where they seem to be on these uh, big red gems, or at least they're painted as gems in the army book. This gives us a nice uh, outline to the white and the yellow. Okay, just using the Drakenhof nightshade on the blue areas. Just going carefully around the edge to the white, where it'll give us that nice outline. And then the last shade I'm applying is the Null Noil. Just using that and all the dark areas and the metal. These gaps between the the arrows were they were painted black in the army book example. But I prefer the look of like a dark grey with one or two passes of null noil on it. I then tend to just go over the uh, studs, metal studs, just with a small amount of null oil. Okay, so that is the base paints and shading done for these three models. So next will be to move on to the layering and highlighting and we'll do that in the next video thanks for watching